How to get your H2P approved using X Leads Ninja Mode. What is up guys, Zach in here, and in today's video, I'm gonna give you the best tips and tricks to get your A2P approved using X Leads Ninja Mode. X Leads Ninja Mode is built on top of Go High Level. So really going here on YouTube, now what I'm showing you here is kind of like I go to YouTube and I search A2P Go High Level Approval. Now, the massive issue that I have personally been finding with people is they go and then they go click like this video from a year ago, this video from a year ago. They do exactly what this guy says and it doesn't work. And they're like, why didn't it work? Because the algorithm from a year ago to now changes on the A2P. So what you have to do is go to filters, go by upload date, and then go to very, very recent videos, okay? So let's go here and find, I mean, five videos is not good. So if we scroll down here, there you go, two weeks ago, that's perfect. And so going through this guy's walkthrough. You added here. Of how he got his approved is gonna be way more important because he's did something that just got his thing approved. Now to make it even crazier, Go High Level just dropped a loom sharing exactly step-by-step step how this month you can get your A2P approved the correct way. This is straight from the horse's mouth, straight from the people that are actually approving and denying your A2P. So let me include that video so you can see it here. Hi team, welcome to the updated A2P approval SOP. Before beginning the registration process, you want to ensure you have the following documents ready from the customer. Let's start with the CP575 EIN confirmation. This is an IRS documentation that looks like this, where you can find the business name, the business owner, the street, city, state, zip code, the employer identification number. Next, we wanna make sure we have the legal business name and address that matches exactly what is displayed in the CP575 notice, followed by the authorized representative information, a branded business email, no Gmail, no Yahoo, it must be a branded domain name such as name at businessdomain.com. And a personal phone number, so not a Tulio or LC phone. Once you have all of this documentation ready, you can proceed to the next step. We want to make sure that the business profile and website compliance is all set up properly before moving along to submitting the A2P. The business profile setup will look something like this. You will go into the sub account settings and then business profile. Here, we are going to ensure the legal business name and address match exactly as to what is stated in the CP575 notice. So we want to make sure that the legal business name matches exactly what's in the documentation. We want to make sure the email is a branded domain email. We want to make sure the business phone number is an actual phone number and not an LC or Tulio phone number. Again, this is what's stated right here with the business email. We also want to make sure that our authorized representative matches what's in the CP575 notice. Again, with the branded email and the phone number that is a personal phone number and not a LC or Tulio. Lastly, we want to make sure that we fill out the business information so they can select their business type, whether it's an LLC, corporation, et cetera. You, they can go ahead and select the business industry, select the business registration ID type. In our case, we are using an EIN as an example. And you want to input the business registration number here. Next, for website requirements. The website must be an active domain, meaning it must be a published domain and not a high level link. The system automatically generates links for forms, funnels, websites. Those are not the links you want to use to submit an A2P. It must be an actual published customer's domain. We can ensure that the domain is 
set up and published by clicking into the funnel or the website, selecting the settings of the funnel or the website, and making sure that there is a domain selected here. Next, you want to make sure that the links are not broken and that all the buttons on the page are functional. Make sure that there is no spammy content because it may lead to disqualification. As for our opt-in form, privacy policy compliance and terms of service, you want to ensure the phone number field is not marked as mandatory. This is an example of what your form can look like if created within high level. First name, last name, phone number, and email. In high level, when you select the phone field, it automatically marks it as a required field. You can click into the field and on the right side, scroll down and uncheck the required option. Next, at the bottom, you will see the consent boxes which you can click on the right side and revise the writing and make it to your liking. However, keep in mind that you must use proper opt-in verbiage and CTA disclosures. Down here, I have included a few samples that may be used. Also, you must include the sender ID reflecting the company's business name within the consent boxes. You must also include message frequency disclosure. So how frequent will these messages be received? And you must include that message and data rates may apply. If you take a look at the sample, it is stated that message frequency may vary and that message and data rates may apply. You must also provide instructions for assistance as far as text help for assistance, and you must also provide an option to opt out. For example, reply stop to unsubscribe. High level will automatically include reply stop to unsubscribe to the first message that is initiated from the platform. Lastly, on the form, you must include your privacy policy and terms of service. So if we take a look at our sample, Towards the bottom, there is a privacy policy and terms of service section where if you click into the text box, you can highlight each one. So this one and terms of service, one at a time, select the three dots and hyperlink it. Here, you want to make sure that you include a published link, not a high level link, that will automatically link the privacy policy and for the next one, terms of service. Within the privacy policy, you must clearly state that opt-in information will not be shared with third parties. Here's an example of what the privacy policy can look like. Here it is displayed that the information submitted will not be shared, sold, or disclosed to third parties. High level is not legally allowed to indicate what should be included in the privacy policy. However, we can advise what verbiage they should include as far as something like this for approval. The terms of services can be something like this. These are pretty standard, so they can either find these online or they can seek like legal advice. Next, let's take a look at the Trust Center and A2P portal registration. Let's start with the step-by-step -step A2P registration process. You can find the Trust Center by clicking into sub-account, settings, phone numbers, and then Trust Center at the top. There are two sections to the A2P registration. We have the brand verification and campaign verification. The brand verification must be submitted and approved before you can get started on the campaign. We will scroll down and start registering now. The first question you will be presented with is, is the business entity you're registering located in the US or and or Canada? 
Customers who are outside of the US and or Canada, they may still register for A2P. Keep in mind that they just need to make sure that they have access to their business registration number. For our example today, we will be selecting yes, we are in the US. This information under business details will automatically be pulled from the business profile section. However, you want to make sure that everything matches the CP575 form. In this case, everything looks pretty good, so we can go ahead and continue. Again, you want to make sure that the business address also matches the CP575 form. Last but not least, you want to make sure that the authorized representative also matches the information provided in the business profile. Again, make sure that the email address is a branded email and that the phone number is not a LC or Tilio number. Next, you will be prompted to select whether the business is a low volume standard or high volume standard. The main differences between the two are the segments per day and the pricing for each registration. Low volume standard is recommended for smaller businesses, whereas to a high volume standard is recommended for a bigger business who will be sending more SMS messages a day. Although you can upgrade later on from low to high, you will have to resubmit your entire brand whenever you decide to do so. For the low standard, the one-time fee is $23.95, and for the high volume, the one-time fee is $68.05. For our example, we will be using low volume standard. Next, you will be prompted to campaign use case. Let's reference our SOP and move along to the next section. For your campaign use case, there are a few options that you can pick from. The most popular one and recommended is low volume mix. However, if the customer would like to select a different option, they can. For the use case description, you want to be as detailed as possible. We do offer examples here to help the customer with filling the section out. Keep in mind, where there are any placeholders, you want to make sure to edit them and include the business name. You do not want to submit your A2P with placeholders. Same goes for sample message. In this case, I have used an example that we have provided. And you want to make sure that the phone number is the actual phone number that you have provided for your business, as well as fill in any placeholders with your business name. Sample two is another example of the type of messages that will be sent out from this sub account, and you can find more examples here. If you will be using links in your messages, please select this and keep in mind you do not want to send shortened links. You want to include the entire link when sending SMS. The second option is for when you will include a phone number. For example, in our sample message one, we do have a phone number in the sample message. So we want to go ahead and select this option. If you don't select these options, your messages are potentially going to be flagged. If you will be disclosing any kind of content that is age gated, for example, if you will be referencing guns, alcohol, tobacco, you definitely want to make sure to check this off. So again, your messages are not flagged. Lastly, if you will be including any kind of verbiage or content that is related to direct lending or other loan arrangement, please make sure you check this off so the customer's messages are not flagged. Let's take a look at the user consent. Here you want to include, how is this user going to consent that they would like to receive messages? You want to be very detailed as far as 
where are they visiting so what is the link that they're using and how will they be checking off the boxes so is it a form is it something on your website that says text us here so you want to be detailed here again we have samples that customers may use for the opt-in message, you must contain an example of what the opt-in message will look like that the user will receive. You want the customer to include their business name and their opt-out keyword in their opt-in message. Lastly, you want to ensure that all the information is accurate and detailed to avoid delays in approval. Make sure you take a look at all of this and make sure that the customer is in. This should get your A2P approved because it's straight from the horse's mouth, not just from me. So go out here and get your A2P approved and let's go start texting and calling motivated sellers using X Leads Ninja Mode.